Finals. So let's get into it. King of the Hill opening up for Team Liquid Surgical Goblin and Tommy opening up for Tribe. Surgical three and one in King of the Hill. Tommy on the other side of it, four and four. So almost twice, I mean, legitimately, literally, literally twice as many games played by Tommy. Surge opening up right away with the Mortar. Skeleton will stop the charge, nice and easy. And Mortar does get a shot on tower. And you know, Andrew, you're a, obviously a Mortar player, we talk about a lot, but you get one, get two shots out of a Mortar on tower, you feel like that's probably, uh, it's not its job. Yeah, especially a first Mortar. And when you see the Skeletons and a Mortar, immediately you know we're gonna see Rocket, we're gonna see Rascals, we're gonna see Royal Hogs. All these units go very, very well in that deck. And from Tommy, we see Giant Double Prince. Giant Double Prince, which started the season off really, really hot, has now oh. dropped to a 50-50 win rate. This is not a good position for Surge to be in. That is Tower down. Uh, might be jumping up that win rate a little bit here. Wow, and Surge calls good game already. Tommy playing so calculated. Surge is not having enough in the tank. And I think the moment that this was kind of lost for Surge was when he sent in those Royal Hogs. He defended so well with that Rascal Mortar combination, but sending in the Hogs was just a little bit of an overcommit. And now you can see he's behind by about a mile, both on Towers and Elixir. And Pretty much, uh, it's all elementary at this point, Watson. <laughs> Yeah, when you have that devastating of a start, going up against Giant Double Prince, playing Mortar, there's almost no way. And that Prince is, just seemed to never go down. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure if Surge is still making an effort on this one, throws the Mortar down, but he also knows this one's over at this stage. Yeah, 930 HP, I mean. Tommy could legitimately just spell cycle out his King Tower by the end of this game if he really wanted to. Well, that becomes an interesting question. Uh, you know, obviously the win is the most important factor, but if we do go further and further down the tiebreaker list, right? So set differential is your next tiebreaker, then right. game differential. Total crowns is in the tiebreaker list, so do you actually care about getting that third crown or do you believe it's so far down the list this doesn't matter? And, and I truly believe you should care because the way that playoffs are set, it's not round robin, it's not a bracket system. It is a gauntlet system. Oh. So you want to be as high up in the standings as you can possibly be when we get to that final week. And the three crown helps. And so here you have Surge saying, you're not getting that from me. You might get the win, you're not getting those two extra crowns. But that is it. Tommy takes out Surgical Goblin in game number one of King of the Hill. Tommy making Surgical Goblin look like easy money, which is a very difficult thing to do. Now he has Canario in his way, who just came off of a King of the Hill victory over Lapakati and Royal. I mean, that giant tip triple spell deck was a pretty hard counter for, for what Surge was playing, but also Tommy played it very, very well in the same situation. Yeah, a couple small misplays there by Surge, and Tommy playing a hard counter to perfection is just a rough day for Team Liquid. Look at that, preserving the health of his Dark Goblin with that log. And now Tommy looking like he might be playing Mortar. A nice poison value on the back end. And there you have it. You called it right, Andrew. Mortar coming up. So here we are, first minute down. It is Mortar Minor with some Nice little bait aspects for you. And no elixir in hand to pick up that Dark Goblin. You can see the frustration on Canario's face. You know, earlier in the season, I'd mentioned that I, I liked playing the Minion Horde version. Uh, but after seeing the success of, of this one at CRL so much, I, I've switched over to it. And it, the cycle on it is so hard to keep up with. The cards do, do so much damage with the bats or the Spear Goblin, or excuse me, or the Goblin Gang, or the Dark Goblin, coupled with the Miner. It's such a cheap and incredibly powerful push. So we'll see if this Lava Miner can get things back as we get deeper into the game. We're about, we're about 24, 23 seconds away from double Elixir time. And that, that Mortar will take out the tower if it does not 
Yep, there we go. Baby Dragon does come in. And now, uh, Canario is putting together a very nice push. I mean, he, he really could take a, a tower in this moment. The Prince comes in defensively. Fireball beautifully fireball. timed. And look at that. That Dark Goblin just sitting back and making easy work out of all the DPS troops coming across the river. The Miner just a little bit late to get in and tank for the Baby Dragon to get a little more damage. So now Tommy is just going to push on that left-hand lane, take advantage of the fact that Canario needs to get this right-hand tower down. Yeah, and not having a log, knowing he could just play that Rascals up high, not wanting to commit a poison there as well. Ugh. Oh, this is this is just brutal. Yeah, that is a lot of damage in. Now here's a moment for Canario to catch up. Another That's a good poison. Great you see, poison. Tommy does not like that. He knows he just got caught. Yeah, he definitely gave up a very substantial lead by kind of. I think he committed a little too hard in the left-hand lane, but that does give him about a 400 HP lead on that tower. This game changes drastically now, though, with both yeah. playing into the same lane. No way for Tommy to put pressure away. All those units are poisonable. That is a great value poison right there if it does come down. Nothing there to get on top of the Baby Dragon. Tommy now really hurting. Baby Dragon will get on tower. Distracted by the bats, very well played. You know, Canario's just sitting on that Dark Prince for the Mortar one more time. And the very high oh. Rascals, I love that play to preserve the health of the Dark Goblin. Now demanding that the poison be played high. Miner to the back, Mortar wow. does get one shot off. And it catches the Dark Goblin. Tommy knows that that was perfectly played, and look at that! Baby Dragon gets turned around, Miner on the tower. We are so, so close. Fireball and Cycle down to 205. Lava Hound in, in the, the pocket. pocket. Nothing there to get. Got to pick up those guards. A Miner got to, cannot get picked up by Canario. Canario oh, misses the pickup, and Tommy no. takes the game in a nail biter. Canario down, Surgical down, Boof Mac coming up next. So what opened up today, Andrew, looking like Team Liquid was going to run away with things in 2v2, turned into a, a four-game reverse sweep, and now Tommy's close to making it five games in a row to close out the boys in blue. Yeah, I just, wow. All I can say is wow about Tribe Gaming today. They are never, they are unrelenting. They never gave up in that 2v2 set, which, as you said, just looked like it was not going to go their way numerous times. And now Buffmack is the only man standing in the way between Tommy and a King of the Hill sweep over Liquid. Look, Buffmack is completely capable yes, of going is. three in a row right now, but it's not an easy three in a row. No. <laughs> no, it is not. Tommy already putting up the pressure, going to meet that Inferno Tower with his Battle Ram. So minor Muskloon for Buffmack. Tommy running the, uh, the Prince version of Bridge Spam. Bandit will demand a response. Skeleton's a great positive elixir trade for it. And a musky ice golem to meet another musky ice golem. Pretty classic. Put the little snowy fella in front of your musketeer. That will pop that bar barrel. That's a couple defensive miners now out of Buff Mac. Yep, five spent for five there, so still doing okay. Not sure how I feel about that snowball. Snowball almost in some ways worked out for Tommy. Yeah. Keep look at those look at those minions right on the tower. Buff Mac playing very, very solid defense. But three elixir behind, two elixir behind. So here we are, first two minutes down, not much has taken place so far, and we do see the first balloon push. Miner going to the front, Prince doesn't get up to its charge. And you see that Prince going to the back, expecting the Miner to go to the back. And a great bandit from Tommy. 
Wow. And the Bandit does not get picked up by the Bar Barrel. That's a big dash in a lowest tower situation. And the minions are not on the tower. Once again, picked up by Bookmack. That's the benefit of this low cycle minor balloon deck. You know, having the skeletons and ice golem in there, you're able to get at, and not to mention the bar barrel and snowball, able to get around just a little bit faster than that minor rascal's loon. Bar Final pulling. 10 seconds. Barbarian there pulling the knight backwards. Prince, excuse me. So here we go, sudden death overtime. Currently Tommy in the lead. Decides to get fireball value on the tower and musketeer rather than worry about trying to blast through with that battle ram. Probably a smart choice here from the Nicaraguan. Nice pick up there with the prince. And now we got dual lane pressure here coming from Tommy. This time the minions are tanked for and will get a couple hits in. And another defensive minor for Buff Mac. He's making the right call, doing what he can to protect, but time is running short to mount your offense. And those minions played a little higher than Tommy would have liked. They still get the balloon down before a drop. Death damage will help. Two minutes left, though, in sudden death overtime. Bandit coming down a hair late. And Tommy right now totally happy to keep playing that battle ram and letting the Inferno Tower pick it up. He's spending four, making his opponent spend five. Exactly. Those negative elixir trades are something that is kind of crippling Buffmack in this game. This is a big push in the right-hand lane. Fireball in, giant snowball maybe in as well. No elixir for the Inferno Tower. That will connect. Unbelievable. Tommy gets... Beautiful play on both ends. Offense hits, defense plays well. Right now he is in the group. Yeah, this is just high level gameplay from both of these gentlemen. And now the balloon may get a drop. And nice wow. work by the minions to push the balloon into musketeer range. Unbelievable plays coming from Tommy. Both back now at 634 HP in that bottom left-hand tower with only a minute remaining. And, and the battle ram connects. That is going to do it. Tommy, count it. One, two, and three. Surgical Goblin, Canario, and...